everyone, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World Show, made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the award-winning fan show. My, what a weekend, and we are going to talk all about it. We've got headlines, we've got returns, we've got debuts tonight. Nice little Tuesday, you know, if uh, if I might be so kind as to say. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it the fan show way, which I don't, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what that means. But we're here, we're ready to go. There's jinglies in the background because kittens are playing with toys, and, and that's that's just how it is here in Fan Cave Studio, so... Anyway, it was a pretty good weekend, if I might say so myself, and with the uh, <laughs> Indoor Football League, <laughs> ah, Fozzie, the Indoor Football League with uh, the matchups that we had, we'll talk about that in the headlines, the National Arena League had also uh, some fantastic matchups as well, the um, Spokane Wolfpack had their opener, and it was, uh, well, it was something. 36 to 8 was the final, but it was the Tri City Rage that did most of the thumping. Um, you know, and that's, that's who they lost to in the first round of the playoffs last year, so it's, it's fine. Um, it's the first game. They lost their first game of the season last year, too. They went on a big winning streak, and then they had their, uh, their playoffs and and you know they're looking to improve and and right the wrongs from last year, but uh, there's there's some work to be done and that's going to happen in this this at this level this kind of league you you pay to play and you want your your best guys out there so we'll we'll see what happens with the rest of the uh, Wolfpack season but I I think the guys you know there's a lot of room for improvement obviously but there was great turnout fans were great and the season ticket holders the new fan club so that was. It was a nice change of pace to see more than just uh, family members there, which I'm not knocking family support by any means. No, no, no. I think it's just, you know, you want to know that your talent and and what you guys are doing is reaching beyond just, you know, immediate family and and close friends. And I think that the Wolfpack has done that. I don't know if it's been with my help or not, but I certainly try try my darndest to help out the the local sports team here because they're one of the only ones that we got left. So we got to appreciate them the best way that we can and let's see there was the 10 minutes down uh not reunion show but they opened for um for frank and deans kyle bradshaw was on the show friday and that was so much fun and then i uh or thursday and then i went over there friday for that show and i was uh 16 all over again the first time hearing ska oh it just it never gets old these guys are so good 10 minutes down yeah, there's videos i posted a video of their uh rap medley that kyle and i talked about and joked around about and then there was a gopro that the their drummer cinco mounted during the show that you can catch the uh, the performance in its entirety so we're hoping to get them to come to spokane it's technically where they're from it's home for them to play a headlining show with a much longer set and a much bigger crowd. So uh, hopefully we can get that rolling. Uh, this week on the fan show, though, so tonight we've got uh, Marshall Hart because there was uh, some stuff that happened in Nebraska. We've got John Pettit because I was doing some stuff. And then tomorrow night we've got Andre McDonald from uh, the Green Bay Blizzard. Uh, we recorded that already, so that'll be a pre-recorded segment. Very excited, though, because it was a great conversation. We've got the boys from Huge. That's right, BattleBot Season 3. It is our uh, second segment of Season 3. It'll be tomorrow night. Great conversation. Pre-recorded that one with them as well due to some uh, scheduling constraints. And then Thursday, uh, I believe Joe Stacy and bj hill will be my guest and friday we've got a nonsense friday for the first time in forever it feels like brad williams coming back to town i messaged him on twitter i said hey man saw you're coming back to spokane you want to be on the show he's just like absolutely let's do it so i messaged him again he's like let's do friday so friday 
Uh, fan <laughs> Nonsense Friday for all of you uh, fan nation that love the interviews with uh, comedians, celebrities, and, and musical acts. This one is going to be explicit content, and who knows how long it'll go for, but it's going to be a good time regardless. So um, I've, I've teased headlines long enough, so let's, let's get to them. How about the headlines? And headlines, of course, are brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. Dynamite Enterprises is your one-stop shop for anything customized, whether it's custom apparel, screen printing, embroidery, stickers, banners, trophies, pens, coasters, foam fingers, maybe even your face tattoo. I don't know if they've gotten that far, but they have made merch for tattoo parlors. But hit up Ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com. Tell him the fan show sent you. He's going to hook you up. He's going to lets you get uh, your world customized because that's what they do at Dynamite Enterprises. Uh, great products. The shirts, uh, they're flying off the shelves now that I've got uh, a good batch of them here. And uh, a couple of people messaged me, and I was just like, you know, hey, I've got these on hand. I can deliver. Like, who wants them? And then just boom, uh, inbox blows up. Everybody wants one, so I got some deliveries to make this week. But I can also mail them. I mean, yeah, the Teespring... The, the fan show, team fan show store will always be there. But uh, this is uh, something that I'm happy about because it was uh, a product done locally. And I think it's a fantastic product. Thanks to Dynamite Enterprises and Ethan for working so well with me. I will uh, deliver these. It's just the one color, the charcoal, but it is, uh, they're so comfy, so comfy. So go, he can make comfy stuff for you too if you go to Dynamite Enterprises dot com and uh, ask for Ethan and uh, so going into our headlines here let's see let's start with the NAL the NAL man um, I was a little worried because it got awfully chippy there at the end the the Sharks and or not the Sharks <laughs> the Pirates and the Cobras this turned out to be pretty nice little rivalry I'm not gonna lie it's uh, it's something. It, it's something else. The Cobras overcome a 20-point deficit to upset the Pirates. And how did they do it? It was, um, I mean, so they, it wasn't a walk-off touchdown, but they got a touchdown late in the game. A phenomenal grab by Laughing House. I mean, the, the slow-mo replay really almost doesn't even do it justice, which is funny because that's a year after the Ryan Ballantyne one-handed catch that he had in the big game, uh, the Iowa Barnstormers winner over the... Wichita Falls Nighthawks last year. So uh, Billy Back and Laughing House, of course, were members of the Nighthawks. So you fast forward a year, another great catch ends up doing it uh, for that team. But there was some chippiness at the end there. I thought some punches were going to get thrown, but I talked to both Coach Back and Coach Ishmael, and uh, and they're good. Um, there was just some, you know, some tense moments and the players of course hyped it up a bit more than it needed to be but hey you know that's that's the uh, the heat of the moment but they're good they hugged it out and that's that's the important thing right so uh cobras with another win over the pirates now they've played twice in carolina they will play in massachusetts and i think that will be that will be something so i'm very excited for the rest of the nal season uh the mammoths come up short against the the sharks and you know it's a three game win streak now for the sharks who have been looking to uh right the wrongs that they made early on in the season so they're clearly still in the thick of it and let's see what else happened in the national arena league i feel like i'm forgetting something here (laughs) oh the uh columbus lions and the lehigh valley steelhawks had a game against each other. Lehigh Valley is now 0-6. Columbus Lions, 4-1. and I don't know if they've earned the number one spot in tomorrow's power rankings, but, man, it's it's tough because you've got Mass, the Pirates, 5-2, and Carolina, the Cobras, 5-2, and and the Lions at 4-1. and But the Lions lost to Mass, and then... Uh, Carolina beat Mass twice now, and then Jacksonville, well, they've split the series with Carolina, and uh, they uh, also, I believe, 
loss to Mass. So they're gonna they're gonna sit right there at number four. It's this top three. How does this shake out? We'll see. Your input's always welcome, Fan Nation. Hit me up on Twitter at Fan Show Official or like the Facebook page and shoot me a message on there. But it was uh, another great weekend of indoor action. Uh, the Pirates and Cobras game. Go back and watch the replay. Like if you didn't watch it, seriously watch it because it was fantastic it was a great game i mean maybe not start to finish but still to overcome a 20 point deficit that was that was pretty damn good in the indoor football league though oh my 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 so the nebraska danger uh lost to the green bay blizzard again or should i say the green bay blizzard beat the nebraska danger again and they took it so hard that they have relieved coach mark stout of his head coaching duties. They have dismissed him as head coach, fired, removed, wh- whatever the phrasing is, the end result is the same. Mark Stout is no longer the head coach with the Nebraska Danger. So it was at the, uh, you know, that's how they're going to mark the next chapter after losing six straight games. This team was 4-1 and one at one point, and now they're only two games ahead of Green Bay, who really wants that fourth uh, playoff spot. But uh, Sioux Falls over the Cedar Rapids Titans. That was a close game until the end, and then Sioux Falls uh, cranked it up. But the game of the year, okay, not just the game of the weekend, game of the year, Arizona Rattlers, Iowa Barnstormers. This one, it wasn't back and forth, but uh, I, I believe that there was a score on every offensive possession by each team. And then towards the end, uh, there was a field goal instead of a touchdown by one. So now clearly we're going to have lead changes. And there were, I said, first one to 65. And it was 69-68 in overtime. First time I've ever seen a walk-off two-point conversion. And man, for Dixie Wooten and the victorious Barnstormers, for him to make that call, he probably had to leave out the loading dock. And that was the joke I made with him because, oh, that was such a game. I got to watch this thing start to finish. Joe Stacy with some of the best calls of the season on this, including right there at the end. But man, Iowa now accounts for both of the Arizona Rattlers' losses. So Arizona, 9-2. and two. Iowa eight and two, Sioux Falls Storm eight and three. We've got a three-team race to the United Bowl Championship, and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Now, what'll happen with Nebraska with the shakeup? Well, that's what we're going to talk to Marshall about. What uh, what's going on with Green Bay now that they've uh, doubled their their wins for the season with two? Um, are they going for that fourth playoff spot, or is it just about making sure that they're putting out their their best foot forward and the best product that they can week in and week out and staying competitive. What's going on with the Cedar Rapids Titans? Well, we're going to hear from Marshall about the danger. We're going to hear from BJ Hill and Andre McDonald this week about the Green Bay Blizzard. We're going to hear from John Pettit, who makes his debut on the show tonight, GM for Iowa, about what this means for that organization. And then we'll see if we can't wrangle up a storm member or Arizona. Those guys are always so tough to get a hold of. But, uh, hey, you know, um, I take what I can get here on the fan show, and I, I do my very, very best with it. Uh, history was also made over the weekend as uh, for the first time ever, 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 an expansion team. That means that this is its first year in existence. The first time playing its sport. The first time for everything all season long. You got to see their first win, their first fan base, their first uh, introductions, their first loss, their first everything. And now they're the first team that, during all those firsts, are going to the Stanley Cup Finals. That's right. Your Vegas Golden Knights, with a 4-1 win of the series over the Winnipeg Jets. I don't know who saw this coming, but if you go back all the way to the start of the playoffs, they swept the LA Kings 4-0. The Sharks got the closest with a series of 4-2. And Winnipeg gets one on him in the Western Conference Finals. Your Vegas Golden Knights, or I don't know who you cheer for, but I've been with this team since day one-ish. That's right, Uso reference. And although I haven't watched nearly as much hockey as I would have preferred, and I don't believe that them winning would give me the same feeling as the 49ers winning another Super Bowl, but... By God, this has been a phenomenal story. So much so that I was listening to the Dan Patrick show the other day for the first time in a while. I just haven't had the time, and and it's not as accessible as it was when I was cleaning floors in PetSmart and could just put my headphones in and listen live. But 
he even pointed out just how amazing of a story it is and the fact that the Raiders are going to get there and nobody's going to care. Like, uh, win or lose in these Stanley Cup finals, the fact that they made it there and and just the way that they've done it. The, the, they've done it the Vegas way. They've played with Vegas style, Vegas flair, all of the above. So they have won that city and the Raiders are going to get there and they're going to set up shop and no one's going to care. Like, they, they'll have good attendance at those games, especially when that brand new stadium opens up and blah, blah, blah. But people are going to lose interest, especially if the team loses, right? Uh, it, you got to win. And the Vegas Knights have set a bar so high that I, I just don't see how any John Gruden or any Raiders, what, whatever comes through that city, is going to be what the Golden Knights have done in a year. Uh, it's just, it's incredible. It really is. Uh, uh, props to them. They they deserve this soundbite right here. Golden Knights win, lose. I can't say draw because it's the Stanley Cup Finals, but you guys, you definitely earned this. So congratulations to the city of Las Vegas and your Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, with that, of course, that's going to bring us to the end of headlines because I don't think that there was much that happened in the NFL, other than, of course, the Panthers have named their new owner, uh, Mr. Tepper. Uh, the NFL teams approve Mr. Tepper as the new Panthers owner. Um, Rogers apparently was quoted asking the, the question, why cut Jordy Nelson to just to bring in or and then bring in Des Bryant? Because obviously I don't think the two are related. Um Eagles declined Foles Browns trade this offseason. That's funny. Uh, the Jets are shipping quarterback Hackenberg, Christian Hackenberg, to Oakland and then Vegas uh, for the Raiders uh, for a pick. Eagles part ways with uh, Kendricks after six seasons. Eagles linebacker uh, Warillo done for the season after a torn ACL. And then NFL uh, Players Coalition finalized Social Injustice Pact and Belichick mum on Brady Gronk absences at OTAs. Well, of course. When is he ever talkative? Like, when when is Belichick not mum on something? Answer me that. So that's your NFL headlines. Uh, the rookies, are they've got their numbers. They've got their uniforms. You can preview those on NFL.com. But... Uh, you know, it's it's that time where we're going to start or media is going to start reaching and it's, you know, until until August, until stuff starts to get organized, it's going to be very unorganized right now. So NBA uh, playoffs are still going on, but man, there is no story right now as far as professional sports uh, than this Stanley Cup finals and the Vegas Knights being there. Who will they play? Will it be the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Washington Capitals? Tweet me at Fanshow Official. Let me know your ideal matchup for the 2018 Stanley Cup Finals. And with that, we will go to a quick commercial break. Marshall Hart joining me in just a couple of minutes. We'll be back with more of the Fan Show after this. You're listening to the Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports Talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am, but the 1% do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons. Like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy, Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on Exciting. top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And joining me from the Isle of Nebraska in Grand Island, it is one of my favorite offensive linemen and one of my favorite special teams coaches, Marshall Hart. How you doing, Marshall? Oh, I'm good, Rich. It's always good to be at the top of that special teams list. It, it really is. It's a special spot, is it not? <laughs> oh, it is a very special spot, I wanted to say. <laughs> Oh man, so it's been uh, a pretty crazy ride in in Nebraska. Obviously, there's some stuff to talk about, but uh, it, the the headlines, you know, the the notifications, the emails that I get, let me know what's going on in the IFL. Uh, it seems like you guys maybe took the loss to Green Bay a, a little hard, um, but there's been a, sh- a shake up now, and um, you know. Where were you when you got the news, and what does this mean for you now that Stout is out and you guys are pressing forward with the less, less than half the season left? Um, you know, I, I was just at the office. You know, we were just getting getting to work and getting things going. But really, what this means is that we just gotta, you know, we just gotta figure it out. You know, we just gotta work hard. And we gotta make sure that we're doing the best that we can for these guys. Okay, and that's fair. And um. As a as a person who's in coaching, like, I, have you been through anything like this before? I feel like everyone has, but uh, I don't know if you have. A little bit, yeah. You know, we had this situation at the high school that I was at this fall, um, but nothing ever mid season. So this is kind of a new territory for me. It's kind of a new a new obstacle that I get to overcome and a new experience that I get to learn. Were you surprised when you heard, given that you guys still hold the fourth playoff spot as of right now with the two game lead over Green Bay? Oh, you know, I'm not I'm not keen to any of those decisions. You know, to be honest with you, you know, I just come into work every day and you know, I just gotta find a way to beat Arizona. That's kind of the attitude that we have and the attitude that we still have. Okay. So Co head coaches. Um, I mean, I would assume that Shaq, the offensive mind that he is, that will probably be his role, and then Pig Brown mm-hmm. um, with the defense. But uh, I mean, what what does co head coach mean? Like, does do they have to like have a, a vote, like a tie breaking vote through you for like personnel decisions and whatnot, or or just like how does this? I, work? I guess that would. I guess that would make me the power man. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, to be honest with you, it really wouldn't work as well if we didn't all get along and, you know, it's working as well as we do together. You know, Pig and Pig, Pig is great. Um, I think Pig is going to be an incredible head coach in this league, um, here very soon, you know, and Coach Shaq, obviously, you know, Coach Shaq's great. You know, Coach Shaq, I, I just heard the other day, second in wins of, among all IFL head coaches. Um, he, he's a great coach. Obviously, he has a great offense. Uh, so really, you know, we've just got to make sure that we're, uh, work all together, we're on the same page, and make sure we're doing, again, you know, doing the best with these guys that we can. So, uh, as far as your role there, still special teams, mm-hmm. still offensive linemen, but uh, did they yep. talk to you about, like, taking on a larger role, some head coaching duties, or did they have, like, maybe a, a kind of interview with you uh, after the decision was made uh, to see if if they wanted to have you be the interim guy? Like, I, I don't know how that process oh. works. You know, uh, really, you know, we were just informed of the way the team wanted to go. Uh, you know, you know, as opposed to role, you know, we all pitch in. You know, there's three of us coaches here. So we all, you know, in a way, all of us have to make sure that we're all on the same board. And we're all taking a bigger a bigger load. You know, we're all, you know, we're all helping out. We're all pitching in to make sure that we get, you know, Coach Stout did an, incre- did an incredible amount of stuff around here. Um, not only from a game planning and from a decision standpoint, but even down to making sure that the little things are taken care of, like laundry and, making sure that groceries are taken to the guys and all, you know, everything that we need to be done. Okay. And that's a fair point. I think, uh, is, is head coaching something that you ultimately want to do? And, and do you feel like you would be ready for that role? Had you gotten that call? Uh, you know, eventually it's something I really want to do, but you know, at this point, you know, I'm 24 years old. I'm, uh, you know, just kind of breaking into the game to be honest with you, just kind of get my feet wet. Um, you know, it, it'll be, you know, a little bit, you know, I think, I think I do a good job if you know, given the opportunity, but at the same time, uh, I have no problem learning, uh, taking, taking a little bit of time to really understand my craft and really to be ready for that role and to be ready for that opportunity and make sure that it's, uh, it's a fully seized opportunity as opposed to something that I might not have fully been ready for, you know, not even from the football standpoint, from just the, everything that comes with it. 
Now, you guys look ahead to Arizona. Like you said, you know, it's it's always the, the next man up, the next game up on the schedule. So for you guys, you're going to go on the road, and it's going to be the new look Nebraska Danger, whatever that means, under the co-head coaching of, of Pig Brown and, and Adam Shackelford. And then, of course, you there uh, holding that tie-breaking power vote. But when right. – with this much left in the season, which isn't much, it's like when I was talking to Andre McDonald, I, I said there there's just enough season left for you guys to finish strong and, and get where you want to go, and that that same thing goes for you guys in Nebraska. So what what's the message been in the locker room, and and how what's the best way to to get back into the competitive mindset, knowing that you know uh, you you can sit on this for a day and then you got to get back to work. Yep. Oh. And that's exactly it. You know, it, you know, really, we just got to make sure that we come in with a, you know, um, just, you know, we just have to expect to win at all points in time. So we have to come in, we have to be confident. We have to be ready to go. I mean, Arizona is a fantastic football team. I mean, they have football players all over the board. You know, I think their center, Stephen Galoa, is the best center in the league. I, he's fantastic. Um, Lamar May is a great football player. Uh, Jeff Ziemba turned to be a great quarterback. Anthony Amos, that defense is incredible. Chris McAllister, our Keith Brown. But we got to be ready. No, we are just as talented. You know, we have to be ready to get in there and be ready to go. You know, we're not going down there for a participating trophy. You know, we want to <laughs> go into all these football games ready to win. Well, the uh, the Wolf Pack might be on their way to a participation trophy. I know it was only one game, oh, but man, man it just it, it was not the same that without a, you. And I even made a oh, comment. Boy, that was a comment. I, I I even made a, a comment about it because uh, so somebody I think it was Devin came up to me uh, like midway through the fourth quarter and he said, "Man, it's just he's like it's not the same right now. Something's off." He's like, "Our O line, it's just it's so different." I was like, "Well, you don't have Marshall out there making smart ass comments, getting everybody you know fired up and, and ready to go. You don't have that veteran leadership of Marshall Hart on the squad Man, right now." That's. That's so right. You know, we're, uh, you know, obviously being in Nebraska, you know, that's, that's still a ways away from me. Um, eventually, though, you know, once, once I'm done with all my business here and I'll be able to tag along for the end of that season once I get back. But to, the gang, you know, the gang, you know, hopefully the gang gets back together. Hopefully there's somebody else that'll make smart ass comments, you know, just like me. I don't know if there's, you know, you might find this hard to believe, Rich, but I, you know, I haven't been invited back onto the, the, uh, uh, football league Facebook page and the <laughs> Facebook group. I haven't been, in, I haven't been invited back. Um, that's been a, that's been a sore subject over the last couple of weeks between me and Scott and Mike Glenn and the rest of the guys. Oh, wow. Type, 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 type. <laughs> I, you know what? Type, type, type. That's right. Rich. So somebody's going to be able to say it. <laughs> I, I will say it was funny to see Scott again because I hadn't seen him at uh, the practices or at the uh, car wash, and, and we. I've I, heard what I've heard. Scott's too big for. I've heard Scott's too big for practices now. That's that's word on the street. The, half the team I've might be. Uh, I mean, but uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Scott, though, it's it's a scheduling conflict. Uh, practice is happening during uh, reruns of Murder She Wrote, and he just can't miss those. I, I mean, I he, was just gonna say, what's his? Uh, <laughs> I've heard the retirement home has a bedtime, and I've heard it before when time practice starts. Yeah, curfew. Curfew definitely plays a large role he, into Scott. Hey, tell me, did he cramp? Did he cramp before the first half was over? I don't did he believe he did. The first half was over. I, I don't believe I, you he know. Did. At first, because it's the prune juice that he takes in now at that <laughs> at the home really does make him hydrated. <laughs> but there it's is okay. Mike Glenn's not too far behind him anyway. Yeah, I know. Mike Mike Glenn's been been a lot of fun, but uh, there's definitely a void there on that team uh, without Marshall. But I know that you're uh, doing doing your thing in Nebraska. So moving forward then with the danger, it's uh, one game at a time. Mm-hmm. It's a new look Nebraska danger team. Um, what what is are your thoughts on like what this team needs to do to to finish strong the rest of the season? We have to execute. You know, that's just that's just the name of the game. You know, our, our defense played played lights out defense against Green Bay in that second half. Uh, we just didn't put points up on the board. You know, we've got to commit that we got to come out there. We've got to find a way to put more points on the board. You know, obviously that's the name of the game. You know that we want that ball to cross that line and we want to celebrate for a little bit. Now, I was talking with um, Andre McDonald about Green Bay and how uh, him, 
Brian Hicks and some of the other guys, uh, they've summed up their season with one word, and that's adversity, you know, with the coaching change that they went through, the the different quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. They're on, like, their third one. Uh, the injuries on both sides of the ball, some big defensive losses. So for you guys, uh, you got a two-game le- two lead over them, but just knowing everything that you guys have gone through as well, and you started out hot, but now it may be overlooked just because – of everything going else in on in the league for everything that you guys have been through, like how would you sum up the 2018 season and what would a playoff berth mean to, to you after everything that's gone on? Um, I think overcome would be the best way to describe this season. Um, you know, we had, obviously we had a great start to the season, you know, uh, Duck Fleming, uh, obviously he's an incredible football player. Um, you know, once he got hurt, you know, we kind of had transition phase and, you know, we just struggled to overcome. You know, we kind of pushed that ball halfway up the mountain, and then we kind of let it start to fall back down again. So so being able to finish that, being able to push that ball over the top and throw it over the hill, I mean, this playoff is a one-game playoff, and you're in the ship. So really, I mean, we have to make sure that we're ready to go. You know, we you know we don't want to go into these games and think, oh, we just want to, part, you know, we just want to back, you know, we don't want to back into the playoffs. Yeah. So we want to be one of those teams that catches fire right now, and, and we go into that playoff game with all the confidence in the world. Yeah, this was the time last year that Nebraska looked like a really dangerous team, and I, I had them pegged as a uh, probably one of the most dangerous teams in the playoffs just because of, of how hard they fought this point in the season. So this is mm-hmm. this is Nebraska's time of the year in the IFL season, and so you guys have got uh, your work cut out for you, but obviously the chips have fallen where they will, and you guys are going to do what you guys do in uh, in football to get through the rest of this season. So, Marshall, we miss you, and thank you for uh, the time to come on and, and talk about everything going on uh, with you guys in the danger. But, hey, you know, uh, finish strong, and, and best of luck the rest of the season, my man. Thanks, Rich. I will see you guys here in the near future. All right, sounds good, man. You take care. All right, buddy. See you later. And that was Marshall Hart of the Nebraska Danger. And I'm glad he was he was in a good mood because when I invited him, he was just like, what are we going to talk about? I said, well, obviously, like, you're there. Like, you, you know what's going on. So there was some things that he wanted to not comment on, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, it, it, like, how many times I got to say this? This should borderline be on one of my fan show shirts. This is in Dateline, okay? This is the fan show. We try to keep it lighthearted, but, you know, the fans, I, I ask the questions that I would want to know as a fan, that I want to know as a fan, and that I feel the fans maybe would want to know. And a lot of fans want to know, like, what's what's going on with Nebraska? So I I kept it as as good as I could, given that I want to respect Marshall and his request to not comment on certain things. And that's fine, because that's that relationship that he's going to be on again in the future. He's going to be willing to talk. He's going to be open. Um, So as long as we have that communication and that relationship and that mutual respect amongst each other, that's what makes for a great interview here on The Fan Show. And what makes for a great work environment is Praxis and their new co-working space. That's right. Praxis is Spokane's newest co-working space. And in this space, they value diversity, inclusion, and a sense of community so if you guys are an entrepreneur or if you're entrepreneurs and you want to collaborate together help each other out if you're looking for a place to go and and do your entrepreneur stuff like praxis it's plain and simple i've been talking about it all month long and it's for good reason because praxis celebrates entrepreneurs they want to collaborate with and they want to create the best work environment of your life i'm the recipient of the 2018 entrepreneurship award for best media from Praxis because they believe that much in local entrepreneurs. Located on the fourth floor of the Holly Mason Building, 157 South Howard Street in Spokane, Washington, 99201, the lease is for a space that is 3,500 square feet and is equipped with a small kitchenette, conference room, smaller office, a large open area. And there are excellent parking options, a coffee shop downstairs, and a space that is only a nine-minute walk away from Riverfront Park. 275 a month is all that they're asking, but of course, if you go to them and you're interested and you want to do more than a month, to month membership they do have some discounted rates for longer term commitments i believe right now three month is the is the magic amount of time that the 
three is the magic number. But a membership to Praxis includes a personal desk, access to all the business and recreational amenities, key Wi-Fi, and use of private rooms as they're available. There's no hidden fees, no conference room fees, no limited amount of minutes that you can spend in any one or certain areas. But two seventy five, unless you negotiate longer, is what you get. Uh, is what gets you everything that Praxis has to offer. So hit up Robbie, fantastic individual, Robbie, R-O-B-B-I, at PraxisCoworking.com, or phone call 509-220-0817. Praxis, be yourself at work. And with that, we're going to go to a last commercial break and bring on John Pettit to the fan show to uh, wrap this thing up. Uh, his debut, GM of the Iowa Barnstormers. We'll be right back with the fan show after this. This is The Sheet. It's me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw that Scott hates it. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I gotta run. And only in Alabama that could happen, I have to say. They're so good, (laughs) man. They would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision-based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness give it to him kudos i'm clapping like a golfer very good johnny i'm proud of you wow you guys agree on something again i'm very impressed you ever had a bad week you know just you walk outside step in a puddle like right when you walk outside i mean how's your puddle right outside the house are you you stand on the curb and somebody drives by and splashes water up on you or it's just raining on you not anyone else I, i will tell you before you go any further I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and a big fan show welcome for a man making his debut on the show, the GM of the Iowa Barnstormers, John Pettit. Mr. Pettit, welcome. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, I, I would hope the word is great or fantastic. I mean, this is really something here that we're watching unfold in Iowa with this Barnstormers team. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on and talk about it was just, uh, I mean, the Barnstormers for so long have been synonymous with, you know, arena football and Kurt Warner, where he got his start. Uh, he wore the goggles and uh, sort of put Iowa there on the map for for this type of of game and here is a team who last year went on an incredible winning streak uh, made the postseason had a great run and now uh they've beaten the reigning champions twice one at home once on the road and and made history by beating sioux falls for the first time in their 10-year uh rivalry what what has this era of barnstormer football meant to you well i think it's been great i mean uh you know, it's great for our fans. I mean, you know, the fans have stuck with us, and, you know, we've had some, uh, you know, not such good seasons and stuff. So, you know, it's so great that they get to share this and uh, get to see what, uh, you know, again, uh, we came back in 2008, 2009, and went to the playoffs, but haven't had much success uh, after that. So it's great for our fans. Yeah, and I love your guys' fans. Uh, Iowa is pretty much like a, a second home for me at this point. I've uh, been there twice with the tour hoping to come back a third time who knows where the championship will be but uh, you guys have one of the best uh play-by-play guys on on the air and joe stacy if not the best he brings just an energy and enthusiasm there's so much going for the barnstormers right now but it all starts with you in the front office and then trickles down to the head coach and and the roster and the game plan so from your perspective and just your day-to-day like, what would you say if you had to pinpoint a moment that everything sort of turned around in a positive way for what we're seeing now? What was that moment? Well, I think the moment was, uh, you know, uh, getting Dixie Wooten here and uh, and that uh, coaching staff that he put together. 
I mean, that's been the biggest turnaround for us. And, uh, you know, um, uh, what we've seen the biggest difference in, in the culture and everything else. And, um, you know, Dixie, uh, is a, is a great coach, great motivator and brings in good people around them coaching too. So when players come to Iowa now, um, not only, you know, we try to make it so that all they have to worry about is playing football and stuff, but, uh, they're also getting taught and they're going to leave here a better player. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what we're promising them when they get here. And that's what's happening. And, uh, so, you know, I think the biggest turnaround for, you know, Jeff Lamberti and myself is, uh, you know, when we, uh, decide on Dixie and, uh, Dixie will tell you, he went through, um, a long bunch of interviews before we decide on, cause we knew the next coach we hire has to be a home run for us or else, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be good for the franchise. So um, we couldn't be happier than to, to that we've got the right person. What was the resume pool and interviewing process like as uh, as far as candidates go? And was there uh, an answer to an interview question or just a moment that you knew Dixie was the guy for you? Well, you know, I, I think Dixie went through probably seven or eight uh, 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 of interviews with us. Uh, and we had, you know, every coach – um, available and every, even coaches that were under contract were applying for the job. And, you know, that's a, a great thing that does come with uh, the history of the Barnstormers. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, Dixie answered a bunch of questions the right way. And, you know, we asked the questions, you know, five different ways to see if the answers were consistent. So, um, you know, I think uh, when he, he talked about, uh, you know, I said to him, if you could bring any player, you know, would you bring this guy? And he basically said, no, I would probably go and find this guy. And, you know, I'm not going to name names because they're, they're still out there. But, I mean, <laughs> he just, uh, you know, his, his thing was, well, he wasn't that good, but we put a system in that worked for him. And I think that's the key, I think, to uh, – you know, your, your team is to, you got to play the cards you're dealt. Oh yeah. So, you know, he puts up, he puts the game plans in that works for the players he has. Yeah. And it's been a fantastic and really fun squad to watch this year. Um, just the uh, Drew Powell and the dynamic that he's brought to that offense. You got one of the best receiving cores, Brady Rowland, Ryan Ballantyne. And then of course on the defense, you got a guy who's leading the league in interceptions and in Bryce Enyard. And he's been just a real treat to watch out there. But Iowa to me has been one of those things where it's almost like like Green Bay but without the the NFL level team where the Barnstormers are the team and so much so that it's like a big family just the way that the fan base is and how the flight crew interact how they've welcomed me pretty much as one of their own you've got your your voice on play-by-play joe coming and hanging out with the fans and just the excitement that he has with every broadcast and then even you guys in the front office it's like a family affair for you you have your daughter julie who's running the game day operations and she does a fantastic job with that is this what you guys envisioned when you uh decided to you know you wanted the barnstormers and and be their gm and what it's become today yeah absolutely you know in, in my uh, history I mean, i've worked major league baseball and uh you know nhl hockey and stuff and you know i had uh, arena football teams back in detroit you know so i really love the game and i love uh you know, the young players are getting a shot. And, uh, you know, when we did do it, I mean, Iowa is, it's Iowa. You know, you know it's, uh, we want to make this team as much just like Iowa, and that's what it is. It's, it's family-based type thing. You know, I do disagree with you when you say Joe Stacy's one of the best play-by-play guys. He is probably the best <laughs> play-by-play guy. Yes, I, I can fully 100% agree with that. His calls during the Arizona game were, were fantastic. It's uh, it's broadcaster goals is what We're just lucky is. that there's only one game a week because I'm not sure his voice would last uh, <laughs> if he had to do it three times a week. Uh, so. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joe has been a real treat. Uh, the flight crew, they've been fantastic. And then, of course, uh, Coach yep. Wooten taking the time to be on the show uh, throughout the season and, and talk. He's a lot of fun. And then your players always very welcoming there. So, you know, you, you look at everything that the Barnstormers have, have done. The Kurt Warner days uh, been a staple of indoor football or arena football. Whatever league it's been, the Barnstormers are there. The fans are devote and, and very much uh, a family-like atmosphere. So, look Looking at this season, uh, Coach Dixie says that he feels this is the year of the Iowa Barnstormers. Uh, from a general manager standpoint, one who cares so much about the fans, who the fans speak so highly of, is is a championship really the, the one thing that you have left that you want to try to give this fan base? Oh, absolutely. That's the one thing that the Barnstormers have never done. They've never won a championship. So that is the one thing, you know, and we, we talked about Dixie and, you know, we had a, a great run last year, um, 13 and three. And then all of a sudden when Dixie starts putting together a roster, there's only five or six guys he's bringing back. And, you know, you know, we were a little nervous and you know, we would talk to him. I talk to him all the time and he would say, Oh, don't worry. We're going to be better. And, you know, we trust them and, and we are better. And, uh, you know, one thing I love about this league is that, uh, you know, I love the the rules we have. I love that we play, you know, similar to the outdoor game with the runs. I love that we go after young players who still have a shot to make it to the next level. And, you know, that's what I think is great. And when you do do that, you need good coaches. You yeah. need coaches who can teach them, you know. If you're going to bring in just a bunch of, of veterans, then you don't really need a good coach. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, uh, and we learned that. I mean, like I said, uh, these guys came in with a bunch of new names and and everything else, and we had to replace uh, Jeffy Jones in the middle. And without a, uh, you know, without skipping a beat, we did. Yeah, and I think it's been such a treat to watch this season. There was some uh, games against Nebraska, and of course, the first matchup against Sioux Falls that you just, you know, you wanted to, you wanted to believe that this year was was different for Iowa, especially with how much Coach Wooten had put into to this team and and to make it uh, a repeat of of last year and then some, and and for that win to happen in Sioux Falls the way it did, and then to go on the road to face Arizona. I mean, they're not championships; those aren't won in. in you know april and may but my god you got to feel really good about this team this year um one thing i wanted your uh thoughts on was that obviously you know we're focused on the season now but of course the, the future is always uh, on the mind the forefront or in the back of it but there was some controversy some stuff that went on during the off season, a lot of the fans really like you uh, speak very highly of you as, as a general manager and a voice in the indoor football league. And a lot of the teams, the players, the coaches respect you. Uh, what, what, is it that you would like to have on your plate with the IFL moving forward as far as seeing this league thrive and grow? Well, I, I think that, you know, I think we will strive and grow, grow. And listen, there's no, I mean, to me, you know, there's no animosity. I, I am good friends with people who are running teams in all the leagues, uh, AFL, CF, CIF. Um, I help a lot of those teams. Uh, there are a lot of them are good friends of mine. Um, so there's no animosity. I mean, I, it, to me, it's good for football the more that are playing. But you can't criticize that there's certain things that uh, we want to do that, you know, in our league is we want to, you know, keep a certain professionalism, and that's what we do. So, you know, I think just moving ahead, we just need to find like owners and uh, in the right cities and, uh, you know, just keep moving forward. I know a lot of the fans have voiced their opinion about wanting a certain team in Quad City to join the IFL, and uh, I hear that that may be a possibility, but uh, is that something that you would like to see happen next season? Um, you know, I would not. Uh, I'm not going to go out and say, you know, what cities we'd like to have. To me, it's not the cities as much as um, – you know, we want to have the uh, right uh, uh, ownership, the right people that are running the teams in a like way. Yes. So, you know, and that's what we want to do. I mean, uh, again, I don't want to get into who's calling who or anything like that because, uh, to my knowledge, we're not calling any of their teams, and I, I don't think they're calling any of us. 
Yeah, that's fair enough. And, uh, you know, I uh, always do love the input and insight from the different perspectives around the league. But you got to be really excited about this Barnstormers team. And, and you, you'd like to think that at this point, really any outcome is going to be a, a great one for just how the season has gone so far. But I know that you guys won't accept anything less than a championship. And it very well could be in Iowa. So, uh, for you, um, as a GM and everything, um, is there a better scenario for you than, than having that United bull in, in the well in Des Moines, Iowa? No, there's no better. That's where we want it. That's where we love to bring it to, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. We also have a great building. That's it's, uh, I think it's one of the nicest buildings in the league and it's run so professional too. So we love to bring it here and showcase, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, our goal is to, uh, win it here, but if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll win it in another building if that's what it, if that's what it takes. Love the confidence, John. And of course, uh, I, I love and appreciate the love I get from everybody there in Iowa at the well, the, the fans, Joe, you and the players and coaches. It's always a very warm and welcoming feeling when I step uh, into those through those doors at the well. But, uh, you know, if the United Bowl is in Iowa, I will be there and uh, I, I look forward to to seeing you uh, if that's the case. So uh, best of luck the rest of the season and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, well, well, it's going to be a great uh, uh, finish. I mean, it's going to be a great uh, last four games, uh, and they're all going to be just like that one in uh, Arizona. They're they're like chess matches, and they're nail biters. And um, again, we're you're welcome here anytime you want to come, and you know, we appreciate everything you do too, making the people aware and doing all the work you do. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. You're you're doing great things there in Iowa, and I can see why the fans love and respect you so much. So uh, you have a great rest of your night, and uh, I will see you down the road later this season. Thanks for having me on. You take care. Yep. Bye. And that was John Pettit making his fan show debut. And there's certain interviews, certain conversations I have on here where I'm going into them. I haven't talked to this individual at this level before. Um, and for for the show, for the last, I'd say probably year and a half now, that's been a majority of the interviews. I remember uh, last year when I had had Coach Chris Williams at the time of the Green Bay blizzard on the show uh before i had a chance to meet him uh him and i had never texted talked on the phone met anything like that um i reached out and wanted to have him on the show he said yeah and uh get him on we have a conversation and you could just tell you know uh the hype was real right the the way that the players talked about him because you know i'll reach out to people that I do know affiliated with that. Uh, obviously, Jimmy Baconator Pratt, uh, Ron and uh, Connor Ferguson and Dixie Wooten. I've talked to them at great lengths about their thoughts on John Pettit. But, you know, the, the hype may or may not be real sometimes. But I can tell you right now, the hype was real on that. You, you have these conversations with people that you've never talked to before, and you just know the kind of person that they are. And John Pettit's a, a man for the fans. He wants uh, this to be a successful season and that means championship for the Iowa Barnstormers. So uh, very, very happy that he was able to be on the show tonight and uh, very grateful for, for this conversation that we got to have. So always looking towards the future. I would love to see this league uh, take on another couple of teams, uh, really get some passionate fan bases out there and, and just take the momentum and run with it. I, I'm not going to say that I think parody is the key to that, Clearly the best team will win this season, but I know that for a lot of people um, seeing the same team win, whether or not uh, you know they feel that they're the best one, has gotten somewhat tiresome. So uh, I think it would be a great thing for Iowa to win. Uh, and if Green Bay were to win, it would be a great, great thing for them. Uh, really, any team in the league right now, it would be a great thing for them to win. Uh, Arizona, though, would be back-to-back, and you know um, their, their fan base is very passionate and devote as well. 
So we're going to move forward with this season. We've got just enough football left where this is going to be a fantastic finish. Where will the United Bowl be played this year? I've already put in the time off to be there for media day. I just got to pick my destination and go. So um, I do want to thank all of you that have supported the fan show, and that's going to do it for this evening. Big thank you to Marshall Hart for coming on talking danger football, and of course John Pettit for talking Iowa Barnstormers. Tomorrow night we got a whole new episode with our second BattleBots uh, weekly segment here. Uh, episode two was Friday, so we've got segment two with the guys from Huge. And then we've got Andre McDonald of the Green Bay Blizzard. We'll talk some sports, some football, some nonsense, and everything else. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the IFL season. going to be a lot of fun. So if you're not a fan of indoor football yet, th- this is the prime opportunity to hop on that bandwagon, I tell you right now. So will we be in Arizona, in Sioux Falls, Nebraska, Green Bay, or Des Moines, Iowa for this year's championship? We shall see. Tight race to the finish, and I'm very excited. That was the thing I was going to ask, John. How the hell the playoff format's working this year? I would just assume that it's the top four, and with that, number one plays number four, right? They host it, so if that's Iowa, then they would host, as of right now, Nebraska. And then Arizona would host Sioux Falls, because that would be number two and number three. That would be my guess, and then, of course... Uh, whoever had the better record that one of those two games would host the United Bowl. We'll see. Very exciting stuff. That's going to do it. Uh, Don't forget to check out Praxis, Undisputed Belts, and then, of course, Dynamite Enterprises. Big thank you to my partners and sponsors here on The Fan Show for making all this possible. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.